this section is going to talk about ring magnets. Ring magnets are one of the most useful, versatile, diverse type of magnet that we sell. It seems that somebody has a use for almost any shape and size of ring magnet. We're going to take a look at just a few of the ring magnets that we have. The first one we're going to look at is what we would consider just a fairly standard ring magnet. It's three quarters of an inch OD, and it's a three eighths of an inch ID, and it's a quarter of an inch thick. A lot of people use these in various types of experiments. The, a lot of your high school kids like to do use these in science experiments. Some of the more common applications are taking advantage of this repelling field and putting a shaft in between it. If you've got a shaft like a pencil or a piece of wood or a dowel in between it, it acts like a little shock absorber. Several students over the years have used this in a way of making uh, something to simulate uh, vibration absorption from things like earthquakes. They'll set up an experiment that shakes a table and they'll have the platform that maybe a building is sitting on resting on six or eight of these pairs of magnets and it just sort of bounces up and down and takes the shock much like a shock absorber does. And so that's just one application. We've got a lot of different applications where people have used this three quarters inch OD, three eighths ID ring magnet. Now we're going to take a look at one that has had some really popular uses because of how super thin it is. This particular magnet is 20 millimeters, 22 millimeters OD, 10 millimeters ID, and 0.4 millimeters thick. This little stack of magnets is actually five magnets. They are about as thin as a sheet of paper. So thin you can hardly see them, yet they're very, very powerful magnets. One of the things that they use these for is in different kinds of magician tricks and things like that, once again, because they're so thin. It's a very good magnet if you need a thin one. It shows you an idea of how thin they can actually make the magnet. Now, one of the other things that becomes a constraint in making ring magnets is the difference between the OD and the ID. We would call that wall thickness. This ring magnet that has an 11.4 millimeter OD, 10 millimeter ID, it illustrates about the thinnest wall that the manufacturers can make. If you look at how thin that wall is, it is not much thicker than a sheet of paper. It's 0.7 millimeters thick. And as we separate these, you can see that they're very, very tight. It's almost like a knife edge that they meet at. And when you need a small ring that's focusing the force right around this small edge, this works out extremely well. One of the applications for this has been in medical and biology experimentation. They have the little wells that they need, and they'll put their proteins in, and they want to hold the fluids in as they wash them off. I'm not a biologist, so I don't know exactly what that's doing, but they have a reason for doing it because the protein particles are ferromagnetic that they're working with. And so when they put a magnetic field around it, it traps the, the particles in the cell. Then they're able to wash the fluid off, and they're left with what they wanted. And so that's one of the reasons we've had these made for them. Now we get down just to show how super, super small we can make them. We actually have some that are smaller than this. This particular magnet has a three millimeters OD, two millimeters ID, and it is one millimeter thick. This magnet has lots of little applications. Many of them are in the jewelry area or in the sensor area because of its extreme small size. We actually have them smaller. We have some one millimeter OD, half millimeter ID, and half millimeter thick ones as well. Then we get to this little bit larger magnet, and this one has the, this one's another just a size of thickness and just showing you the different kinds of magnets that we have. And if you want to look at this big one, now the big one really catches a lot of people's attention. The main people that like this are the people making windmills. One of the cool things about this with a windmill is it allows them to use two of these repelling each other and hold up the upper assembly of a, of a vertical axis windmill so that it doesn't touch here and it acts like a load bearing bearing. But the big reason for that is when you have the normal gust of wind that hit it from the side, these magnets absorb that impact so that it levels it out and it doesn't cause it to bump and, and doesn't cause it to bend a shaft and things like this. So this one has a lot of very popular uses. So the thing that you're looking for is 
if you're looking at a ring application, what are some ways that you can use it? Now, I wanted to tell you about the practical applications from a, a business standpoint, commercial or industrial standpoint, but one of our most exciting applications, and we've sold just literally thousands and thousands of these, is wedding ring magnets. And I had these made years ago because magicians had asked us, they said, can you make a magnet look like an actual wedding ring? and I was able to make one do this. I originally made it because my mother had arthritis and it was really helpful to her to have these ring magnets on her fingers and give her something to help her fingers so she could play the piano. And it worked really well for that, but the magicians really took hold of this and had lots of different tricks that they have come up with and it might, the ones that we carry look just like a wedding ring and the only problem that causes is a lot of the magicians aren't married and they don't necessarily want their female audience to think they are. So they want us to come up with a different style of ring and we hope to work, come up with one that, that makes them happy too sometime. But anyway, you look at the different application that you have and see which magnet best fits your application.